How do you get an internship at a big tech company or one of the fag companies like Facebook, Amazon, or Google, or one of the big OEMs like Apple or Tesla? Well, there's actually only two steps. One, land the interview, and two, pass the interview. But there's a lot that goes into these two steps, so that's what I'll be talking about in this video starting right now. So I'll start off by saying that grades are not as important as you might think. Don't get me wrong, a 4.0 is really nice to have, but I can affirm you that an employer would prefer someone with a 3.0 or something not super high, but maybe someone who has designed and built a robot in a club or who has won some type of design competition. I know a lot of people always ask, what if my GPA is really bad? How do I get into a good company? Well, honestly, just leave it out of your resume because I've virtually never been asked my GPA by a recruiter during an interview. So obviously in order to pass the interview, you have to land the interview first. How do you land the interview? Well, that's going to be largely contingent upon your personal background. For instance, going to a target school, which is generally the top 10 or 20 engineering schools, helps a lot. Just the school name alone is probably enough to get you an interview if you go to your school's career fair and hand employers a copy of your resume. But of course, this isn't a hard requirement and many people who don't attend these schools likewise get interviews. So one obvious way to get interviews is improve and perfect your resume, cover letter, and portfolio. This won't happen overnight, so start early and have as many friends, working professionals, and someone from your school's career office review these things for you. Once you have a critiqued resume, I will start applying online to jobs ASAP, preferably as soon as you enter university. You really have nothing to lose because you'll be learning 90% of what you need to know for your internship on the job anyway. So applying online is one way to get an internship, but there are many other more effective ways. One thing that I think is often overlooked but is critical is networking and socializing with friends and professors. You never know what kind of connections they might have. Like for me, I had a friend, he knew someone working at a company who referred me to the hiring manager, and that's how I ultimately got my first internship. You'd be surprised how much larger your network of connection grows just by simply knowing one or two more people. So getting a referral is almost always a surefire way to get an interview because it allows you to skip the long line of web applicants. You can also get interviews by attending the recruiting events and career fairs at your school. If your school is pretty well known, you'll usually find several of the large tech companies to be there. So to be honest, I didn't do so well at these recruiting events, but I do know for a fact that they do work because many of my friends, they were able to get internships and interviews on the spot. One other thing you should definitely try is connecting with other recruiters at companies you're interested in by shooting them a direct message on LinkedIn. Now this may sound like a crazy idea, but honestly the worst that can happen is they ignore your message. And who knows, they might be able to get you an interview. I had friends who had a lot of success doing this. One thing I will mention is that it's okay if you don't get your dream internship at one of these big tech companies at the very beginning. Many times it takes one, two, or even three internships to establish a certain level of work experience before everything works in your favor. But let's assume for now that you don't have any work experience. There are other areas you can focus on to maximize your competitiveness and marketability. One of these things is personal projects that sound cool and stand out on your resume. Designing and building a rocket in a school club to send a satellite to space or researching nanomaterials at a lab in your department are all pretty eye-opening. Another way to stand out is go look at a description of a job you are interested in and find the exact skills that the employer desires. For example, it could be something like CAD or Python. Once you have honed in on a skill, develop that skill and complete a project with it that you can speak to and showcase in an interview. So to recap, the different ways of getting an interview from most to least effective is one, get a referral, two, attend your school's career fair, three, cold DM recruiters on LinkedIn, and four, apply online. Now you've landed that interview, but how do you ace that interview? Aced. 
Well, that depends a lot on the company you're interviewing at. But I'm going to answer this from the perspective of a top tech or OEM company. Generally speaking, every company has its own style of interview questions, but almost always it's going to be a technical interview with a mix of the standard interview questions like tell me about yourself, why do you want to work here, and what's your favorite product that we make. For the technical portion, you're almost always going to get questions related to mechanics, materials, design, and manufacturing. So things like force analysis of structures, moments of inertia, and material properties of the most common steels, polymers, and composites are all fair game. Also expect some questions related to geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and the pros and cons of different manufacturing methods like plastic injection molding, die casting, and machining processes. Many times an interview is heavily dependent on luck and is just a numbers game. Sometimes you'll bomb an interview because you get questions you just don't know how to answer and other times you'll know everything and kill the interview. Penta kill. So I can't give you guys a one size fits all solution. However, it's always better to brush up on these concepts frequently and do more problems to keep your mind fresh if you have the time. Obviously, you want to have a good work life balance so you don't end up burning out. Also, if you don't know how to answer a question during an interview, it's always better to think out loud and explain your thought process than to say, I don't know. That way, if you are on the right track, the interviewer at least knows your approach and can give you partial credit. Now you've prepared for the technical questions, but do not stop there. You need to do and record several mock interviews with someone who has interviewing experience. Like a friend or like at my school, we could have someone from our career development office do mock interviews with us. By just having someone look at you in the eye and ask you to convey your thoughts to them, a lot of the actual pressure felt during an interview can be simulated and it can bring to light a lot of the areas such as tone of voice and body language that require attention. Now I want to end this video on this note. An interview is meaningless when it comes to judging your ability and your worth. An interview says nothing about who you are as a person but it can really kill your confidence and your self-esteem. Man, don't lose confidence. Look at this as a game that you have to beat. Maybe like the Squid Game. Keep practicing, keep getting better, and learn from your mistakes. You won't get these dream offers overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. And although an interview is based a lot on luck, more of it will come your way if you just continue to work hard at beating this game. All right, so that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And thanks for watching. Peace.